Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Watching Paint Dry Show, featuring me, the Greg Sego. Today, we welcome Schley, a wonderful artist, wonderful human being. We met through Twitch, doing sort of similar things. I, of course, video game photography dabbler. He, painter of what he refers to as video game memories, where he fuses nostalgia and sentimentality into his wonderful painting creations. If you're an artist, if you're interested in art, if you're pursuing art, if you're a veteran of art, I think you're really gonna enjoy this episode because we get into it. So with that said, let's roll tape. Everybody, it's me, Greg. Uh, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a guy who needs to check his camera balance. Oh, you can see the pimple. Uh, I'm <laughs> Schly. <laughs> I'm Schly. I've I've been around for a while. I guess you know me as Aqua's mod. Um, but I'm a painter who plays way, way too much rust. Way, <laughs> way too much rust. I'd like to discuss a lot of the rust in a little, but uh, continuing this this line of questioning, where are you? Uh, oh, Spokane, Washington. Beautiful. So yeah, it's a small it's a smallish city in um, a conservative part of the country. So it's they say it's a um, a little bit purple in Spokane, right? A little mix of the red and blue. But it's pretty red for me, but I'm from Portland, Oregon originally, though. So that's, you know, I definitely end up, you just can't grow up there and not be a, a hipster, hippie, <laughs> liberal, beard wearing, smell, smelling your own bullshit and thinking it's amazing <laughs> kind of snob. Like that's that's just what we create. Yeah. I mean, I, here in New York, it's 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 the same, but different brand. Yeah. Like, like we're fine with Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. I feel like you guys are more artisanal. Yeah, I, I remember coming out to, I think it was probably 2012 or something like that. Maybe, maybe 2009. I don't know. I can't remember anything. But uh, it was the last time I spent any significant time out in New York. And just going around Brooklyn, I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> it's still, it's still happening here." The hipsters. This, are not this looks familiar. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the the final question in this line of questioning is, mm. "How are you? How are you doing?" I'm we all right. Out, we cut out the the what are you and the why are you because it's a little too like esoteric. If you, <laughs> if you explore those. Well, here's the problem with I'm I will end will end up esoteric anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Conversations uh, with me do kind of just meander. Um, how am I? I'm okay. I'm doing good. Good. To I've hear. been uh, doing a lot of art, but it don't show a lot of it. You know, it's like doodling yeah you know, I, I always like people who, i say it a lot um like when i'm streaming on twitch or teaching people art i talk about it as doodles yeah uh, and that i try to carry that all the way up to when i'm doing like larger format oil paintings you know that even have some detail and some rigor to them i have to keep that hey i'm just you know, I'm just doodling. I like that looseness in the wrist, so I doodle a lot. That's great. You mm -hmm. know, hearing that, I don't come from a canvas background of art. Mm -hmm. You know, mine yeah. has, mine's been more, it's still very visual, photography and filmmaking, but the way you're describing that, it does sound similar to say like 
um, well, not just getting like your batting practice and what technique mm -hmm. and, but in the, beyond that, it sounds more like, it's sort of like you're, um, you know, comparing it to like a writer that's like your, your notebook of ideas. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. I have this, this little sketch down. Can I bring it to the next level? Is there, a, is there, a, right. will this seed grow? There's that. Um, it's, it seems a little bit like uh, street photography too, in the sense that you just get your butt out there and, and, and take pictures and get comfortable with being uncomfortable and maybe making other people slightly uncomfortable, <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. Um, Cause those are the, those are the barriers depending on your personality, right? Totally. Those are some of the barriers to staying loose. Um, and for me, I, uh, I like the doodle thing because any, everybody does it and anybody, everybody can do it. Um, and the the thing is is that that's terrible English. Um, <laughs> the thing is that you, is you that. just get re get ready for some terrible English. <laughs> I can I, just like our old uh, Texas Hold'em days. I see that and raise you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. Oh man, I forgot. I haven't played pop poker in a while. Yeah, for those who don't know, I've lost many a ten dollar buy ins to shy. <laughs> <laughs> I one or two maybe, but not not that many. I'm usually just a, around a little bit longer. I don't. I usually don't go out first these days. Yes. But I certainly when I first started playing poker, I certainly did because I would I would you know I'd be like all in. <laughs> the guys like I got kings what do you have <laughs> nothing <laughs> you know and that um yeah you learn not to not to play like that <laughs> there's an art there is an artistry to to everything and that's kind of like that's an underlying message of of this podcast you know we 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 draw we doodle this will be very comfortable for you sometimes we pick a topic sometimes we just do whatever and the yeah. point basically is and i'm sure you you have learned this or, or learned this about yourself from an early age and probably teach your students the same thing is just the doing is oh the re, the, is the reward and you, you get to a certain point of or i'm speaking very uh with a lot of authority but Personally, oh, I got to you. the point. <laughs> Personally, I got to the point where I realized, you know, as much as I am envisioning a final product of whatever, mm -hmm. it could be a, just a simple image of what I, I want to show and within a frame. Uh, it's just everything going into it is so much fun. And it's like yeah. that. That's the most rewarding part is I got to make art today. How great is that? So. I mean, that's it. That's everything, right? I mean, a, a, and there's a, something, you know, you hear these phrases and turns of phrase and you don't think about them. And then they, you come back years later and you're like, oh, okay. And for me, it was work of art. Yeah. And I was like, okay, the work is the product. It's what's produced by the art. The work of art isn't the art. The art is only exists during the production of the piece. Right now, there's obviously that's not a fast and hard rule because there's someone who's doing, uh, you know, some sort of audio piece coming from a <laughs> grill somewhere that loops for the next thousand years. But you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not it's not a it's not a rule. But um, I do feel like it's true makes total sense and and it's not it's not immediately apparent and it's right. not even later on apparent i think this comes with time because everybody i've spoken to on the podcast so far and and, and in uh off offline in mm -hmm. in real life in in person you know you hear like we all start if we're lucky enough from the same place we have some crayons as a kid mm -hmm. maybe yeah. you know 
something maybe a cray paw <laughs> <laughs> but then you know some life happens and we kind of maybe yeah. lose that practice and with losing that practice we it's sort of when you return to it or try it i think time has passed and you've learned more about life and and ref, refining whatever thing you're working on and you probably Mm -hmm. Just that voice in your head goes, you know, I'm not good, but it's not about that is what I'm trying to convey because what good is so uh, it's a subjective thing. It's a, I mean, it's a trap for one thing because, because what, yeah, I mean, it is subjective. It's value, right? And what is value? There's, we're not going to get into that. (laughs) I don't want to go. Yeah. We're not going into Socratic dialogues. Um, (laughs) Of, but it's um, it for me. I try to keep it as simple as possible, in the sense that I doodle because I enjoy it. Yeah, and because I enjoy it, I do it more often, and because I'm doing it more often, I get better at it. Right? It's if there's no, I mean, people say this like there's no magic, right? Like people see Ansel Adams' photograph and they go, oh my God, it's magic. Now I'll spot you that it's brilliant and it's beautiful, but he took a lot of them. (laughs) You you know what I mean? (laughs) Um, And that's true of a lot of, uh, of art. You know, I think the magic in all of it um, only it, it reveals itself through uh, enough practice and in that sense not only of um, like mastery in the way people think about it but mastery like the your use of language the way you speak I oh well, not I but someone could imitate and I would know that's you so how did you develop such a unique style that I can pick it out well, because you've been talking for a long time and saying a lot of words and saying it to a lot of people and say, and you've, and your style has developed through the mastery. Right. So, yeah. so for me, the magic is when you see someone's style, that's, that's expressed um, through just the repetition. It's just natural. It's their thumbprint. Right. And that's, that's what I, I find beautiful in art is when I can feel that. That was art right there. <laughs> that was a beautiful, beautiful explanation. No, seriously. I mean, say no more, really. It's going to be the shortest podcast yet. <laughs> as we're done. <laughs> well, to, 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 to finish that thought is basically, if you're watching this with us, or I mean, if you're watching this, Draw with mm-hmm. us. Just start. Just break something out. Take. I have mm-hmm. computer paper. Yeah. And some Mondo Llama washable markers. I got a Ticonderoga number two pencil. Exactly. With the eraser worn all the way off, hard as hell. <laughs> you have one of these in your drawer. <laughs> exactly. So here's the question. I mean, this is the the biggest question of the night. Mm-hmm. What do you think? What 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 what's What's sparking joy and intrigue in oh, lot, mind oh, of right now? I mean, I started talking to you about this uh, a long time ago, and then I went down a hole of research since then. But um, a long time ago, I was trying to get together you and um, my other friend, uh, Matt, who's a, a video editor and spe- uh, he's a special effects guy, yes. like award winning. And then uh, another photographer who usually mostly shoots for music. But in any case, um, shoot your shot. Um, I wanted to get us together to talk about visual language. Yes. Right? Um, Because I I didn't go to art school. I just continue. I'm I'm a curious person. Right? Like, um, I just keep googling (laughs) you know what i mean and like i and i as i'm getting older i'm getting better at admitting that i really don't know anything which means i get to learn stuff faster 
Yeah. You know, I get to learn so much faster when I'm not afraid of failing because I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and in that context, as a new person coming to something, you're going to be clumsy. You know? Exactly. Uh, so what have you been researching? Oh, okay. And just visual so, language as a whole. Um, right. I start. I started by trying to break it down into um, components. Right. Just list it all out as far as I could. Right. You can say color. Start with something similar. You can say color, and you can split that into color grading or overall. You know where you're going with it. But and then you have to 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 start at the simplest place it's like let me let me instead of making it complex let's get to the the crux which is that you can't learn it (laughs) first off it's not a language there is no complete vocabulary it's impossible to create a visual language in the sense of what a language is i i think and I'm I'm not saying that as a cop out because I think I can still try to make an a, a cohesive way of of entering into understanding visual language, but for for me I in, I got to a point where I was like okay, you know I had to go through I I went into cinematography first right directors and cinematographers, all the way back you know got to go back go back to your roots black and white you know yeah. Um, and uh, John Ford, uh, you know, a Kurosawa. Um, and and then I, I worked my way through that. I was studying color theory again, even though I put myself through it. And also trying to think about color associations, right? Like, um, like take blue, right? Simple color, right? Yeah. But I can, right into, I, can, I can talk about it for 45 minutes, you know what I mean? Like right now I can talk about blue for a long time and, and it's impacts on society. It's impacts on our culture, the way it's read in certain places and why um, it's, it tends to be a maternal or a calming color, right? Blue is calming, except if you're Italian. Um, <laughs> I, we're pretty sure. Or if you're a part of the, Blood's uh, gang down in <laughs> right. LA. Perhaps. <laughs> uh, in a similar reason, they think it's because of football. Because uh, Italy's colors are blue. Oh, wow. Uh, and, the, and so all that is blue associated is with... So that's their guess as to why Italians respond differently to blue than most Interesting. people. Interesting. And there's a whole bunch more. Like, blue doesn't exist. <laughs> like there's that you know well, that, it doesn't exist as a color not not to to cut you off but uh this is something i do think about a lot with regards to actually visual language like i don't language may may be the wrong word because it's not it's not not everybody learns visual their own interpretation of visuals the same way as you just mm-hmm. alluded to, like we, everybody sees colors differently. Mm-hmm. So just, just from the start, <laughs> it gets yeah. a little murky. My, my, my definition of this may mean something very different to you. So that means we enter this, uh, psychological association realm. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's some things you can say, but then none of them are, true true and you know what i mean they're not true for everyone yeah but but you can make general directions um, like for instance and i and i i think we're talking about the same thing but like i think so too if you there there's some things that are just primally terrifying to the human uh a human's mm. viewpoint like seeing you know like a a bear foaming at the mouth you know Mm -hmm. close up in your face that's gonna enact terror but if you i mean we 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 started naming the stars bears pretty quick so (laughs) you're you're real quick on the visual language connection you went about all the way back with the bear that's a good one but if you grew up in some you know backwoods 
uh, carnival life where you you mm-hmm. trained a bear and it's your it's mm-hmm. like your dog. It may be that may be a comforting view, you know. Mm-hmm. So it, it's an interesting thing to learn of, of sort of the communal associations of whatever that we've we've kind of uh, compiled together through generations and cultures and whatnot. And then what's what do these things mean personally to us? Right. I mean, it's this is where it's OK. So it, this is why I'm saying you can't lock it down in language. Exactly. Is I'm agreeing yeah, yeah. with you on language is the wrong word because it, unfortunately it goes very quickly to dream interpretation. Um, I mean, for me, that's the fastest way to understand it because I know not everyone's dreams are the same, but there's usually some visual content and it has certain emotional associations. Uh-huh. Um, I think you can say that at a, at a minimum. Um, but because it's occurring in the unconscious and these visual collages or sentences or however you want to say collections of symbols or meanings, um, can never be coalesced into a defined structure or meaning because the moment you do that, that's a conscious behavior and you're no longer unconscious. You're awake (laughs) now. And so you've lost, you don't get to carry it across that, that threshold. Yeah. It makes total sense. And I want to, I want to kind of, that's kind of my fascination though. I think that I I kind of unconsciously, you're, you're, you're revealing a lot to me tonight (laughs) about myself. I'm learning. Oh, I got you. No, I, I'm, listen, you, I mean, see, this is... you can see the the, <laughs> yeah. the the gerbils on the wheels in my brain spin oh, yeah. right now. Yeah, it's fun. I, I mean, uh, that's, the, that's I wish my camera wasn't doing this. Uh, <laughs> it's, been, it's been doing a, a. It's like a some kind of you have to get into a physical control on the webcam, or it does some kind <laughs> of color thing where all of a sudden this goes pure white. <laughs> And then a bright red. <laughs> That's why I can't wear anything black during my streams because then I'm like a ghost. A, a, a I'm, weird... I'm floating head here <laughs> <laughs> with a printer in the background. <laughs> but I think you just, just, just hearing what you're saying. I think that's my attraction to art and especially film, because every film, if if, if a movie is done well, you're put under that that dreamlike spell where what you're watching mm-hmm. uh, everybody watching it with you is experiencing that same dream together. And then the dream is over, you know, 90 minutes, two hours, mm-hmm. three and a half hours. If you're Christopher Nolan <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and you're left trying to um, make sense of, of an, you know, mm-hmm. a, a artificially unconscious Mm-hmm. experience well see the thing about a movie is you get you st- start getting other very interesting parts of of group consciousness coming in with more like um archetypes right or you know the hero's journey kind of stuff um yes. that's okay you're with me yeah, yeah, yeah. um but uh and that that starts to yeah, there's there's a thing that I struggle with, which I think I I don't know if it's entirely normal human. You know what I mean? Like when when you talk about stuff like this, it's sometimes better to generalize instead of being like that. Hey, you guys know when you're eating your boogers and there's the one, you're like, you know, what I mean? you're trying to find a very specific wedge of the audience that likes you. <laughs> um, um, oh, I keep losing my train of thought. Um, what was I talking about? Uh, well, this, this happens. This is gray hair. <laughs> I'm only 44, but I, it is gray. You got the you got the gray in the front too there. Yeah, I remember in middle school I started getting a little gray, and everyone's like, "Like what? Is, what is wrong with you?" Like, 
Yeah. Not only do you have a like a full beard in like the sixth grade, <laughs> you're starting to go. I'm like Robin Williams in that movie Jack. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like in my nineties graduation. Uh, oh man. But, yeah. To to I guess. What was I talking about? Well, we're talking about the, the visual language and how I find movies to be so. Oh, uh, were, yeah. Kind of, kind of. I've connected the dots in a way mm-hmm. listening to your visual language research yeah. and how uh, I th- I think personally it, it all comes back to just myself trying to understand myself how like what's going on in here right. based on what based on all the data I'm taking in right. all the senses every day but then the truth is the answer is somewhere in the liminal space in between dreams and awakeness. So you can't ever have it <laughs> in, the, I, in, yeah. the, in the, you know, you can't, you can't, this doesn't crystallize. This doesn't no. two, two, four. You know what I mean? This doesn't, it, it it's, um, it's interesting to talk because the truth is, is there's, as annoying as this can be, and I understand that it can, there's um, the only limitation on what art is, is if the person who you would call the author of the art calls it art, it's art. <laughs> um, and as annoying as that can be, I get it. Um, but when you go there, you, it starts opening up how you can, oh man, I'm all over the place. <laughs> no, you're because I'm no, I because I'm stoned. It's okay. I, it's legal in my state, and uh, <laughs> it helps me. It actually helps me see color better. Interesting. Well, I I have a depression, and one of the symptoms of depression the club, bro. is the yeah right is that <laughs> it, uh, it limits your color range. It it brings the really? vibrancy down. It actually tunes down and mutes. Um, well, it does. It does that to um, basically all the inputs, right? So, you're especially if you're experiencing a depression, as they call it, in as a you know a major depressive period that lasts usually six months ish um, to a year. Um, that uh, during that time, your you have a cognitive bias towards the negative. Um, you have a, a, a heightened uh, neural activity and uh, more tendency to, to to misread a situation, right? Like yeah. that kind of, and and you're you tend to be in a defensive mindset. And you know, it's like um, if you've ever like. I don't know, pee your pants in public or whatever it is, <laughs> is the, the most embarrassing moment. Have you been past. following me? <laughs> <laughs> if you ever like, I don't know, uh, pee your pants in public. I was checking first with Aqua trying to get background information. <laughs> Aqua, I told you that in confidence. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's like that. Um, yeah. so for me, um, it actually is is helpful to smoke uh, a little just to be able to uh, bring my vibrancy back in my colors. Totally. But it does help. It doesn't help with my uh, train of thought <laughs> while drawing and uh, chatting. Yeah. I mean, we are, I mean, let's be real. We're talking about very heavy in depth uh, things here and, and analyzing what we were all on, I mean, subconsciously, at least, taking in day in and day out all of this uh, data again. I hate to say that word because it makes it sound so like mechanic, you know. Uh, I, I mean, it's it's somewhat true, right? I mean, it's it's both sides, right? Like, um, I think, um, I mean, this is a, a well known thing about how the brain works and it has something to do with dreams um you can learn something most effectively by diving into it to an intense degree and really studying it and thinking about it deeply and then forgetting about it and going out and watching a movie and taking your brain totally away go home have a glass of wine fall asleep wake up 
and approach it again the next morning. And you'll find that somehow you went from not quite there to a a deeper understanding of it. And that happened while you weren't thinking about it. Right. So there's, there's a lot of stuff going on yeah. with, with that kind of uh, uh, taking things in. It's funny you say that because uh, in my uh, a similar YouTube ongoing TV show, the 10 minute photo makeover oh, yeah. plug, I preach the same thing. Uh, we, we take a photo, we, we put it in Lightroom and, or, you, you know, you don't even need Lightroom, but as we say, but you put it in, the post-processing program, we do a pass and then leave it alone. Go do anything else. Mm -hmm. And then when you come back, you you may leave it at that moment and say, wow, you know, this is pretty good. And then you come back and you see everything that's not good. (laughs) And for all the gamers watching, we have a huge gaming uh, contingent part of this community where we, you are seeing you, the viewer, seeing two of two gamers in 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 the <laughs> wild right now, in the wilds of our. I'm assuming you have a your system somewhere. I mean, you're on your computer. Oh, I'm um, uh, this okay. I'm sitting in a reclining lazy boy right now. Same. Um, right yeah. here. <laughs> is my mouse pad which there is we go with, with the mouse on the arm right here is my keyboard right here which uh i put onto my lap across one knee and across and this is full gaming we're right here we're this this is it. this is you know the only yeah. thing we're we're lacking is the attenborough <laughs> voiceover <laughs> in the natural habitat even <laughs> here but uh <laughs> It's the same with gaming. Like you, you hit a wall in a level. How the hell do I beat this? You you go to bed, you go about your day, you return to the system and you're like, oh, duh. So I think art, there, and I say this a lot. I know we've had people on who don't consider themselves artists so far, but there's an art to everything. It's not just drawing. It's not just photography. Um, and there's a big part of me that wants to just continue to uh, shout this from the rooftops because the joy that comes with just the, the, the not just the self-discovery that, wow, I can make things, which is huge. We're so lucky to be humans who can like think this way and be like, wait, well, you know, the bird, a bird can make a nest, but they can't draw as far as I know, or, or, uh, you know, they can't, they have no thumbs. They can't press the shutter button. Uh, uh, anyway, El- believe it or not, I'm not, I, I did not spoke for this. <laughs> as far as I know, that's all trainers. <laughs> I'm pretty sure painting <laughs> is still a, a human thing. But my, the, the point to end the rambling. And this is great. I'm, I'm loving this. This is wonderful. This is like... I mean, I hope it's not a nightmare to edit. No, not at all. This is... Mm. I may add in a few, you know, like, when I say, it, like, plug, I'll add in, like, a, a link, but but also, like, a, a picture of a, like, a like a mm. bathtub plug or something. I don't know. Gotta mm. make it funny. Or try to, at least. Okay, so this is a question I've wanted to ask you, right? Yes. Which is... It's not a way. Can you, um, can you, maybe, my answer might be I can't. Uh, can you find a way to describe how you approach your art and the artworks that come out of it? Uh, yes. I think with regards to photography and also filmmaking, you know, here's where my own personal, oh, I, I, I can't, I'm not able to do this or that comes to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is true. It's true with, you know, it's true with many things in life. It's true with art. It's true with sports. Mm-hmm. Can you afford the equipment to play hockey? You know, mm-hmm. can you afford right. uh, the rounds of golf? Uh, mm-hmm. So a lot of my art, especially the films I've made, 
have been born a kind of reverse engineered born out of what's at my disposal right uh where can i film mm -hmm. and where w w who can who wants to help <laughs> yeah. yeah but yeah. within that limitation uh it's it's the opposite of res restrictive the feeling it it it's liberating because now i know what i can i have the frame and the canvas now i know mm -hmm. my constraints and now i can mm -hmm. just go wild on this this mm -hmm. playground and do basically whatever i want within these parameters mm -hmm. um then though there's that other mode that you described earlier this kind of just doodling getting your work in mode and mm -hmm. i think a lot of the ideas really come from that so there'll be days you know, or you know this is the beauty of photography you can bring a camera just about everywhere you can bring it everywhere yeah. it depends on if people want you to have the camera or not yeah <laughs> but if there's something going on anywhere if it's a time of year uh if there's an event somewhere and i want to say uh take photos of that place i'll bring a camera and just do that and within that practice it's out of my own control but ideas just come into existence and it's this may be a, a very um overused uh comparison because of course everybody adores uh david lynch mm. and probably heard this millions of times from him but it's the catching the big fish mm -hmm. thought process of you know you just go out and, and go fishing and some days you may catch you know a little tiny carp or i'm not a big fisherman i think carp are tiny <laughs> They're, they're not editor, particularly, editor's but they're not tasty. So whatever, <laughs> moving on. And then one day, you know, you're going to catch this, the big tuna. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I'm works. not a big fish eater. No, I'm you're good. I think, I think that worked. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it worked. Yeah. Uh, but it's so, the reason I bring it up is it's so apt. It's just like, get out there and, and don't even really look to catch anything it's just put yourself mm -hmm. go through the motions um mm -hmm. nobody because, knows what they're doing yeah well just going through the motions will you will find joy out of that mm -hmm. um and at the very least you know there may be some outings where the photos i take you know they're, they're fine they're but they don't really spark that 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 idea that i may uh follow and that's okay. You know, I got to go and have fun taking photos and, you know, get a lemonade and <laughs> get yeah. some cardio. I, and... <laughs> and, and honestly, I think um, this is an interesting uh, kind of question of uh, learning what you don't like is a process of learning. Yes. Right? Um, I mean, that's just life, right? That's called dating. <laughs> um, you know, learning what you don't <laughs> like and what you can't stand and what you can't put up with and what has to change um, to match your who you are to feel authentic is um, you know it's 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 so it's it's one of these things where there's not a lot of great words for it because it's not designed to be talked about with words. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, this area right here, you know, between the front of the ear and the, and the side of the eye, just right here on the, on above the, below the temple, kind of above the cheekbone, that area, it doesn't have a name. And if you notice in people's drawings, they kind of fuck it up. It doesn't <laughs> seem like it's something you could mess up very much. But, but because of the way our brains approach things, it's easier for me to draw eyes because I have a word for them. They have a concept. I have lots of concepts that pop into my brain because of the naming, right? So, so some of this is unnamed and unnameable, right? Like that, 
And so it's hard to talk about. It's you just can't name it um, and have it make sense. And that's, I mean, I, I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know I have to accept it, but, and I know I've got to lean into the hippie thing. Cause why not? I'd rather be a soft, silly old man um, than smart and right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but I hate it. I want, I want to, to be able to reach out and grasp up something. But the closest thing we can do is I can affect your dreams. Like I could, if you go play Tetris for two hours before bed tonight, I guarantee I know what music's going to be playing in your dreams. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's, that's about as much like kind of crossover as, as there seems to be between those two worlds. It's all so fascinating and we're, I think, you know, for the, for, since we've been talking, it's, I think it is apt to say we're still trying to define these things for, for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, that's the thing. It is, that's the only definition that matters. Which, and I, I'll continue to, or I'll stop for now, but I'll continue to annoy the viewer and saying, this is not specific to me and Schley. This is everybody wants to understand their lives and mm -hmm. art is such a uh accessible and um uh const constructive productive and therapeutic way of of of, of furthering that that pursuit G getting a tangible uh answer for your personal self which is mm -hmm. my endless fascination at least with visual storytelling which is mm -hmm connected to visual language um very much so and my personal um obsession with filmmaking especially is, is vi the visual language how the filmmaker de defines specific visuals within their own story right. so obviously it's, it's all about you know symbolism it's what mm -hmm. we're talking about but uh you know, an apple can be an apple. <laughs> it can also be the forbidden fruit. It can also mm -hmm. take on, uh, you know, the color of it can mean something and it can mean something very different depending on what, how the filmmaker has presented it. And you can take it somewhere. Maybe the filmmaker was thinking, oh, that's not an apple. It's a cherry. And what's <laughs> actually happening is it's her virginity being given because that's the <laughs> fruit. You know what I mean? Like, you never know who's... And then you could be yeah. uh, Martin Scorsese at the end of The Departed yeah. that The Simpsons so brilliantly made fun of. <laughs> right one of the uh, greatest uh yeah. <laughs> throwaway jokes of all time a takedown <laughs> honestly but at the same time i mean right there's there's certain there's certain artists who i feel are a little bit too on the nose right for me but here's the thing that last sentence just bored the sh out of me because I it's so I'm finding it so much harder to care about what I care about <laughs> you know what I mean? to, to care about what my opinion is of something right yeah. like I will never stop making fun of Orby listening to fish okay because that's <laughs> funny Orby um, shout out <laughs> <laughs> but um I acknowledge that fish are very skilled and competent musicians who've made a very successful uh, life for themselves while sharing art with people that means something to them. Like who cares whether I like it, you know what I mean? Who cares whether you like it? And that's, yeah. I feel like that's also um, because we've, we, we are in group out group monkeys. Right. And there's, and it's, it's, um, it's 
when we find out someone likes something that we like, we feel connected to that person. Right. And I get that. Right. But, but I don't care what anyone doesn't like, <laughs> you know, like I, I, and that's, I mean, it's not something to explain in YouTube comments. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, there's a difference between uh, criticism constructive or otherwise and and your fucking opinion <laughs> you know what i mean like if you don't i don't like it it looks bad that's uh, it, you just pooped in your own hand and smeared it on your own <laughs> face i don't know what that means it doesn't mean anything to me or anybody else <laughs> you know what i mean like I, you yeah, I, you didn't communicate anything except that you felt the need to express disapproval and and there's a lot of reasons to want to feel uh the power of disapproving <laughs> um yep. um but that that's a, you know these are the things that i'm struggling with right cuz i still am like yeah but don't make me listen to midwest fucking emo from the 90s punk you know what i mean like i don't want to listen to that you know I and mean, there's a lot of my friends and my fiance and a lot of people that listen to that you know but you roll through it whatever you know i mean um I, this is the context to talk about how life is suffering <laughs> when you have to listen to music you don't like. You know, <laughs> you're working at a job and you've been listening to Christmas music for six months. It's oh straight. My God. You know, like that's a lot yeah. of people's lives. I've done it. It's not that fun. <laughs> and that the, the, I, what I think is amazing is how many people are out there just white knuckling that all day, every day, forever. Yeah, there's only so many amount of times uh the human body can listen to uh this christmas i gave you my oh, oh God. <laughs> <sighs> the very next day you gave it away what yeah the only, what first off the, what <laughs> the only scenario that makes sense is a like an organ donation <laughs> i like that i like that i mean that 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 brings us back to silliness but exactly. anyway, you yeah, I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know a, a different way. It's like it's a, it's a it's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I know I know present day Shalai. When did the art thing begin? Um. So I drew a lot as a kid, um, uh, and I was. Probably, you know, I went from normal, terrible stuff, you know, um, when I couldn't sign my name on it. Um, and, you know, I, I would I would doodle and draw and paint um, in in the margins of books and in, you know, on computer paper and lined paper, you know, just lined paper, so many pencil drawings on lined paper, <laughs> you know? Um, and I, I was never really very good to be honest with you. Um, but I did kind of keep, just keep on doodling. Um, I certainly, I remember when I got to high school, there were a lot of kids that were way more artistic than me at that school. Um, and talented. I remember I was dumb enough. I had a friend, Mike, Mike Olson, shout out Mike. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was, we were having some stupid conversation freshman year about, oh, who's better at drawing or whatever. Right. And he's like, all right, I'll bring in my drawings. You bring in something. Okay. And I brought in something that was, let's be honest, obviously traced. I went for some Leonardo da Vinci musculature. I traced and then I drew over the top of that. And he's like, called it instantly. Traced. And I was like, damn it. How <laughs> did you know? Me. Yeah, obvious. Um, I have no idea where that story came from, but it does uh, amuse me still to this day. The idea <laughs> of me tracing to try and prove that I'm a, uh, a good, a good artist. Um, 
the trick is um, that tracing is also a skill um, and and actually qu- quite a difficult one, in my opinion, to do uh, well. <laughs> it sounds like you had a community from an early age or at least another friend to kind of bounce uh, your art bounce ideas off of and share your art uh that not to not to hog the 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 microphone i didn't have that much you know and that's why i found twitch especially to be so self-rewarding not Mm -hmm. to not to make it all about me But it's it, your it, podcast, and I want to ask you questions. I came on here with questions for you, so please. It took a very short time, luckily, to go from I'm afraid to share this work I made to wait, it's actually really good to share this stuff because I I think I I I don't think I I can't say it without not believing it. Because there's a part of it that is true. I do make my art for myself, but not just for myself. Mm-hmm. I, I do consider the audience the great majority of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I'm get when when I'm getting to a point where I'm making things and it feels just for me, uh, it I there is like a red alarm situation going on in my head, like. Uh, this artistic expression, whatever it may be, a photograph, a, a story, whatnot, mm-hmm. I think, personally at least, I'm making it for somebody else to tell me, or not to tell me what they th- they thought, but to to see how they react. Yeah, no, for, for someone else to feel, respond, connect in what's interesting is where they come from. Because I am putting myself out in this direction, and I'm assuming they're coming towards me. And then, all of a sudden, they come flying over my shoulder and connect with what I'm saying and take it a whole different direction, and it means something else to them. Which is why you find a lot of artists who don't want to tell you what their art's about, because it it's more the connection and the emotional response that you have to art is the only thing that matters. Yeah. (laughs) Like, like about the work of art existing. Like I don't, I already did the practice of art. I don't really care that much about the product personally. Uh, I don't know very many actors who go and watch their own movies. Um, you know, it's, uh, that's that's just how the process goes. But when someone else feels something from that art and that helps them in the sense of um, it's not like it's truth, right? Like, let's talk about something like horoscopes. Um, they don't define and directly uh, identify truth for you. You're uh polarizing half the audience i understand <laughs> um, uh, um, well uh, listen i'm horoscopes are interesting that's it's literally the history of science is is going back and studying horoscope if i can't run an astrolab or astrolabe which i can't which is the instrument that they used to use to be able to understand the the, the rotation of the solar system and the stars um i don't get to talk shit <laughs> about the people that came up with it. All right. Um, but I will say that as it exists as a construct in the current, where it's like you could look at your horoscope or you read it, um, and they make general, um, what are Bailey statements, I think, Barnum, no, Barnum statement, P.T. Barnum. Um, they make Barnum statements that you react to usually with uh, what feels like an association, right? And what I find interesting is I like it to go and read horoscopes. Um, it doesn't really matter to me if it's mine. Um, and and react to what I read. Because what I reject teaches me more about myself. No, that's not me. 
no, that's not me. Right. So art in some ways, the way you, it connects to you and the way it, it, it doesn't, you don't like it is just one more way to have a mirror or to find out where the edge of your personality and soul are, you know? Um, totally. Yeah. yeah. We're, this is like, this is the most, I'm, is this super, I'm, I think we need to do some silly stuff. Okay. I mean, I could talk about this all day. Like and I it's said, so man, funny. I didn't even get close to what I can say about blue. <laughs> <laughs> is it the, is it indeed the warmest color? <laughs> I mean, I felt warm uh, watching the film. <laughs> Have you dabbled in any other forms growing up? Has it always strictly been visual art? All over the place. In fact, one of my my friends um, from one of my oldest friends, we were talking a couple years ago, and he's like a painter, huh? An artist. He's like, I always thought you'd be a writer. And I was like, yeah, but you remember what we were doing? I was sitting around reading books and doodling. I wasn't writing. I was doodling. Uh, I love sculpture. Sculpture is one of my favorite things. Um, that's a, another um, like part of uh, the way I do with doodling. So right here, this little blob of dark is a... Um, is an eraser uh you've probably seen it somewhere but it's a it's a modeling eraser it's for erasing pencil um but i always end up carrying a chunk of it around in my hands and so i'll end up sculpting this which it doesn't hold its shape it does but then i can squish and it's all gone right oh man um, i love it yeah, so I practice uh, I practice sculpting little busts and hands and things like that with uh, this very stuff very kind of like it's like an Eastern fidget spinner. <laughs> kind of, it actually is. It's, I use it as a stress ball. It's also very helpful sometimes when I'm um, like if I'm working with uh, if I'm working in stencil. Um, and I have to do a lot of exacto work. I actually, I like to use it, this stuff, and I put it around the blade as a big lump, usually about two or three times the size of this. And then I just squeeze it and make an ergonomic handle um, <laughs> out of it, which is very handy, by the way, if you have to try to use something and use force and, it's, and be precise. Uh, grab a bunch of erasers. Um, yeah, so I, I love sculpture. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm a musician. Um, I've, I learned to play the bass and piano a little bit as a kid and don't remember it now. Um, uh, but I'm from Portland, so, <laughs> you know, I, I, there is a song that I wrote <laughs> and recorded somewhere around here. I'm from Portland. I, I've known <laughs> so many bands. I've been drunk at enough, hanging out and drinking at rehearsals in basements enough times that there's definitely recordings of me drunkenly improvising lyrics. Um, but there's a, uh, I've never uh, really made too much music. I did, I did write one song, but um, <laughs> the woman I was dating at the time did not appreciate it. <laughs> Oh no! Oh yeah, it was it was called Eight Ball Heart, um, and it would just said you know I forget it was just essentially the idea that it's maybe and now it's no and now it's yes and you know try again later right um, was the basic concept of the song. I don't think she appreciated that. Although I still feel it like it was an accurate assessment. I like just the uh, <laughs> but I I can see I mean not to get uh -huh. to. Uh, analytic but i could see the visual the visual mind through the through the lyrics already just that right. idea of like an eight ball as a heart i love it yeah and and you visually if you're from a, an era where you ever picked one of those things up you see the little blue triangle thing floating <laughs> up to the window right there you get the whole connection to it i like that um, but, uh, no, I've been meaning to try and get back into sculpting. I love wood carving. Um, uh, when I was living in Portland, I never got time to really use it. I, I built, uh, a wood carving, uh, 
it's a downdraft box. So it would have a fan and a filtration. And so it's just, you know, sucking all the dust down. And I had a powered, uh, they have those little powered grinders, essentially like a, a little spinner, like a power Dremel. Um, and you can do wood carving. I set, I built all that and then used it like twice before I, um, but I was love, I love that. I love wood carving. I wanted to learn chainsaw, but I haven't gotten around to it just cause it'd be cool. <laughs> you know, um, lots of stuff, you know, writing, uh, working on learning animation, learning, editing, video editing, you know, all that. And I just, I just poke away at all of it. Yeah, though there's so much. I'm a little bit of a late bloomer with art. I didn't really. I grew up doodling, but mm-hmm. uh, I I always wanted a camera. Mm-hmm. I just never had one as a kid. Uh, aside from you know, family events here and there, right? A disposable camera would pop up, or mm-hmm. I'd like sneak a couple photos using my my you know my dad's point and shoot whatever mm-hmm. at the time i i've always been a kind of an admirer of art and artists um but not so much an actual participant a- outside of you know like a little kid at summer camp making a mm-hmm. you know play uh cup holders <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever the hell yeah impractical clay mm-hmm. item from scratch for like my mom or dad um but ever since actually you know acquiring a camera it i think it's for me I, I, there's a part of me that feels like a, at times a little accelerated mind wise like it's hard for me to plant myself in the mm-hmm. moment because i feel like i'm i'm in that making up for lost time type of mode Mm-hmm. And that's something I deal with a lot. I feel not just, and I think it extends to real life as well. Does that make you feel anxious? Is it an anxious pressure? I mean, it doesn't matter. It can be. It's fine. Yeah. It's- yeah. No. There's there's certainly an anxiety with regards to um, finishing certain pro- projects because I may start other projects, and oh. I can see you already <laughs> reacting like. <laughs> Oh, duh. Greg, come on. That's what artists, that's what we all deal with. You're just realizing that now? No. Um. I mean, the the art is, and that's what I like about the doodling. The art, the fun is the starting. The easy part is the starting. The work, the thing that makes you get to say you're an artist, in my opinion, is the finishing. Right? Because you have to, you have to be works of art, right? But works like you know like there has to you have to you have to let it go i i for a long time and i still feel this way um i just give up i don't i don't think it's done i just can't i don't think i can make it better i don't know how to make it better right and and here's the thing i don't mean that in this obsessive perfectionist uh you know, listen, there's, there's a lot of things that you have to deprogram yourself in in life, right? You you think about stuff you were raised with your parents or some kind of way of dealing with something and some kind of concept that you have to unlearn and learn a new way of doing it. And for me, the, the conceptualization of the artist is not helpful for artists to fall for um it's 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 not there is no cheating first of all (laughs) it's i mean it isn't let's look at the history of art um you you it doesn't have to come out of your head um it doesn't even have to be painted by your hands or done by you it's a often a collaborative if not always a collaborative effort in some ways um 
and you just don't you have to you have to not believe your own bullshit right yeah. don't don't get sucked into it the truth is you do the work and i'm listen i'm not a i'm not a huge fan of andy warhol per se i'm fine with him but he did have a good quote i'll take a good quote where i get it he said when people were talking to him about what his work meant right everybody always wants to pin you down on what your art is for, for and about right and he said i mean we can talk about it but i don't care i don't know i'll let the critics tell you they tell me he's like i'm off making the next thing <laughs> i'm not sitting around what is that, that movie that i made you know what i mean or that you know you don't sit there and think over what you've done it's not necessary you, you what's nice about what you've done is it it functions as a journal in a certain way. It functions as a, a, a memory of, or a form, an impression of where you were at at that time. And y you won't even be able to see it until later, six months or a year at the earliest, if you're lucky, uh, long after you could, have changed or done anything by that knowledge um but you get insights into where you were at um and that's useful right and even with a doodle final uh little question and it's the the, the future for you you especially as an artist is there um do you have that like goliath you've been trying to slay so many yeah. <laughs> Goliath. Uh, I mean, yeah. Goliath. 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 Yeah. Anyway. Um, what, oh, what, yeah is the, there's a lot. what is the 2024 uh, kill plan for the Goliath? Um, well, that's a good one. <laughs> um, what I, I keep grinding on a couple of larger oil paintings. Um, I don't know. I like to try and take the real world and the digital worlds and, and connect them in a way that they're um, un unbreakable, is that if, if that makes sense, right? Or, or I I also say sometimes I paint memories of video games because I don't, I don't I'm not interested in painting the video game. I'm interested in painting the feeling of the experience because when you think back to Zelda, it's not pixels. It's you know what I mean. Like it didn't look clunky to you then your heart saw something else you know um totally. and so sometimes i try to paint the memories of these digital landscapes that don't exist but exist in our common shared memory and we end up with this nostalgia for places we haven't been <laughs> you know it's it's that's the that's the trend right now uh synthwave nostalgia for all these people who never were in the 80s and they're all listening to <laughs> To fake eighties sit. Uh, that's a good wrap up, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this is this is the if you're comfortable or not. Oh, I'd yeah. like to share what I've been working on. This is. Oh yeah. This is me and my mind getting blown by by <laughs> everything you're saying. Here's a here's a mushroom cloud. I like it. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll your these are not finished, but because I was focusing on you and talking more than the drawing. But let's see here. I was just doing. A couple little Greg doodles. Oh my goodness! While I was looking at him, oh, you I know. love it. Yeah, so I'll keep going on him, and I'll gotta, make him a little better. Gotta comb my hair a little more. Oh God, <laughs> my, mine's a big fluff. You can't even tell I'm wearing headphones. <laughs> <laughs> they disappeared into the hair. Dude, I love it. Uh, everyone can find you at twitch.tv slash Schly. S H H L I E. I thought it would make sense, like sh lie, but no. Yeah. No one, no one could pronounce it. Um, yeah, schly.com, uh, schly at Twitch, schly on YouTube, schly on Twitter, schly on Instagram. <laughs> Everywhere the schly. Love it. As we say, have a good life. We'll see you soon. Have a good life. We will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much.